So if you are a coffee drinker like I am, there are very few things that are better than waking up on a cold morning at camp and having a nice, delicious, hot cup of coffee. There's no coffee in here right now. This is just the mug that I use when I'm backpacking, but maybe I should fix that. That's much better. I know of a few backpackers that just take caffeine tablets with them on their trips and they'll just pop one of those in the morning. And if all that you need is that caffeine hit, then that's totally a viable option. But I just enjoy the warm drink of coffee in the morning. So for the rest of us, unfortunately, you can't just lug your you know, household Keurig 20 miles out into the wilderness, so we have to get a little more creative. Now there are hundreds if not thousands of options out there for making coffee when you're in a remote location, so of course this video will not be an exhaustive list, but I have tried quite a few different options over the years, and I just wanted to walk you through some of the options that I've tried and what I've kind of settled on that works best for me. Now basically every method that I'm going to show you will be based on the assumption that you have some way of boiling water. So you have a pot similar to this one and either an open fire or a stove similar to this one. I just recently did a video comparing this stove with another budget stove, so I'll link that up above if you want to check it out. And if you don't have anything, I will link these in the description below if you want to check them out, but you will, of course, need some way of boiling water. So I'll start off with what is by far the easiest method, and that is instant coffee. Now, when I first started backpacking, I went to my local grocery store. I got some of those like 10 for a dollar Nescafe instant coffee packets. And let me tell you, save yourself the time. You could mix some dirt in some hot water and it would taste better than those. Like I wasn't blessed with the palate to be able to detect notes of oak and raspberry or whatever in my beverages. But I can tell you, those things are nasty. Avoid them. I did find, however, on Amazon, I found this coffee. I believe the brand is Weka, but they're instant coffee packets and they're a lot better. These are actually pretty good. And there are a lot of other options out there of instant coffee that it's actually really good coffee. The downside to it though, is that even though it's by far the easiest method, this is also probably the most expensive. These things can get, the these I wanna say run somewhere around 90 cents to a dollar per packet. I've seen them for much, much more than that. So you, it's kind of a trade-off. It's simpler, but it also costs more. And if you're ordering them online, you have to make sure you do that ahead of time. The next method that I tested after I tried the Nescafe instant coffee packets was I found online where you can uh, make these DIY coffee tea bags, essentially. So you cut up a coffee filter and you put coffee in it and tie it up with like string or dental floss and you essentially make a coffee tea bag that you would just let that steep in some hot water. But I found it to just, it, it didn't work for me. I thought that it made a pretty weak cup of coffee um, for the amount of coffee that I used. And then it was also just one more additional thing to prep before a backpacking trip. So I pretty quickly moved on from there. The next method that I'll show you, and you're gonna laugh when I bring this onto the screen, but it's the good old French press. Um, no, I've never taken this backpacking. It's huge and heavy and made of glass, all of the things that you would not want on a backpacking trip. I think I did take it car camping once, and that's really the only reason that I show it in this video. If all you're doing is car camping, then sure, take your simple French press from home. Um, if you are backpacking, there are a few options similar to a French press. I know that Jetboil makes an attachment for the Jetboil that's a, a French press attachment, but that's kind of what led me to finding the next option and that is the AeroPress. The AeroPress is a decent option. It's certainly a lot smaller and lighter than a full-size French press, and it, it works along the same way. It's, uh, it is multiple parts and pieces, but essentially it has all of these little teeny tiny filters that you place in the bottom of the cap, and then you would put your uh, coffee inside of it, and then you pour the hot water in, and there are kind of two primary methods. You can set it directly over your cup, pour the hot water in, and then you slowly press down, essentially the same as a French press, or another option, and I say there's another option. You can find hundreds of videos on YouTube about different ways to make coffee with an AeroPress. The other method is the inverted method, so, you would essentially start out with something like that, put your coffee in there, you can kind of let it steep a little longer like that, and then you put the filter on top, 
invert it and then make your coffee that way. So the AeroPress is certainly a viable option. I know of a lot of people that swear by the AeroPress for making coffee at camp. The pros of using something like this are that it is really easy to use. It makes a really good cup of coffee and you can use it in many other ways. You can make espresso and things like that with it. It's durable, it's made out of this durable plastic, so it's good for having outdoors, and it is a good capacity. You have the ability to make coffee for more than one person at a time, so that's nice if you are hiking with another person. The cons of this, and just kind of the reasons why I would say it is not ideal for me, is that it does still use these disposable filters. They're small, it comes with a ton of them, so it's not a big deal, but it's just one more thing that you have to keep up with. The main thing for me is that it's still just slightly larger and heavier than what I would prefer for something that I'm gonna take backpacking. Now, car camping, yeah, this would be great, but um, I mean, I could store it upside down inside this GSI mug, so it, it didn't take up too much space, but the plunger, the outer piece, and then the little grid cap on the bottom, along with a couple of additional filters, weighs in at 6.4 ounces total, which isn't terrible, but it's just, it weighs more than what I would prefer. They do sell the AeroPress Go, I believe is what it's called, which is a slightly smaller version of this, but I was still just looking for something that was much simpler, fewer pieces, weighs less, and that's what led me to the option that I now use on pretty much every trip, and that is this. This is the Primula Brew Buddy, and one of the great things about this is that it's just a really simple design. It's nothing but a hard plastic ring around the outside, and then permanently attached to the inside of that ring is this fine mesh reusable coffee filter. So to make coffee with it, all that you do is put your ground coffee on the inside of that filter, pour your hot water in, and you're done. So there are basically two ways that you can use it. You can either hold it up above your cup or your mug and pour the hot water in and allow it to just make a, a drip coffee and drip down into the mug. Or the other way, the way that I tend to use it, is I just set it directly on top of the mug. I pour the, the water in and then that also allows the filter to sit in the water and steep a little longer, similar to what you would be doing with a French press. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a plastic bag or something and kind of squeeze the filter just to make sure I squeeze out the rest of that coffee goodness. This thing is super lightweight. It weighs just 1.14 ounces. It packs down almost entirely flat, so it takes up basically no room in your pack, and it sells for almost a third of the price of the AeroPress. As of the time of recording this video, the AeroPress, you can usually find it for between $30 and $35, and the Brew Buddy is selling right now on Amazon for $13. So for the size, weight, and price, I've been really happy with it. Makes a really good cup of coffee and it checks all of the boxes of what I'm looking for in a backpacking coffee maker. Now in regards to things like creamer and sugar, typically when I'm backpacking, I'm fine just drinking the coffee black. But if you do prefer things like that, it's really easy to just go to your local grocery store. You can get the little packets of sugar just like you would see at a restaurant. You can get packets of powdered creamer. Or you can't even take the little pods of liquid creamer. Just make sure whatever you do, you have them inside a some type of container where they're not going to get squished inside your pack because that would be a bad day. So I'll put the links for all of these things in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. And if there's some type of coffee making method that you prefer that I didn't mention in this video, then let me know in the comments section and I will see you guys next time.